And what's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of the Talking NASCAR podcast. This is episode number 81 of the Talking NASCAR podcast. I'm being joined once, as always, by Hitmaster. Hello, everybody. Today is not going to be a very long episode, I don't think, um, as there's not a lot to talk about. Of course, we do have to talk about the events that took place both at Gateway for the uh, Trucks and the Cup Series, as well as Portland for the Xfinity Series. Um, that'll be ma- the majority of the episode, as I only have a couple other news things to talk about. And they're both very short. I have one news, but that's about it. I'll tell it at the end. We also are going to do part two of the new Pepsi drink trying uh, today. Uh, we're going to do that at the beginning. And then at the end, we will preview this weekend's events at Sonoma. So let's jump into it. First, I do want to get this drink tried because I am thirsty. So last episode, we tried Pepsi <laughs> peach um i liked it wasn't very strong peach this one though i got in a can and it's the other one it is lime pepsi so isn't that just sear mist well that's lemon lime and this also is pepsi so not really i would assume not at least maybe it will be i don't know um Imagine, in, imagine you open it and it's just clear. <laughs> yeah, so they, they brought, just put sear mist in it. They brought back Crystal Pepsi. I wish. Fish. Doesn't smell that bad. It's definitely not clear. <laughs> Check like off the, like the peach, it doesn't have a very strong smell. But lime itself is not a very strong smell to begin with, I think, as far as compared to other fruits. So, let's just give it a try. Cheers. Tyler just jumps, chunks it. This is good. I like this one. Once again, though, not a very strong lime flavor, but I can taste it. So, unlike the peach, where you couldn't taste half of it, it eventually came to me. So, that's good though. I definitely think I think the peach one is better because it just has a stronger peach taste, in my opinion. But they're both really solid flavors. Um, so definitely pick these up if you get the chance. I'm gonna give them both. I'll give them both money? eights, eight out of ten. Anyway, uh, now we can talk about NASCAR stuff. So we'll start with, we'll do, I guess we'll still go in, or we'll do trucks first. Um, they were at Gateway. Uh, the rain delayed the start of it, which was nice because, well, I did, I still didn't get to watch any of it. but I didn't actually, watch any of it. I had to work all day, but the rain delayed it for about two hours. Um, so it was for the start. Um, there was no hard hits in this race. Um, let me look. I got this name guy's name. I got to find it. Hold on. Um, but I mean, it's gateway gateway is not always known for the biggest crashes, more of an endurance type race. So you have to think about that. I think the guy's name's Connor Howard or Craig Howard. I don't know. The number one truck. He took a really hard hit during the race. There were a lot of battles for the lead, though. A lot of comers and goers and um, just a lot of overall um, competition for the lead, which was, which is always a good thing to see. Lots of diversity for racing for the lead. Um, so we, we definitely like to see that. Um, Ty Majeski seemed to be dominating the race. He swept the stages, um, but he kind of fell off late. He wasn't really up front contending for the win at the end. Still got, I think, a top five, but it wasn't, you know, what it could have been. Uh, but it was instead Corey Heim, surprise, surprise, pulling away late and getting the win after a subpar start to the race. Um, but he pulled away and was able to win seemingly the 80th race of the season for him. He seems to always be up front in the truck series. So there's that. Then we'll head over out to Portland for the Xfinity race that took place on the same day as the truck race. Um, so it's going to be at different tracks really about the same time as well because of the rain delay for the truck series race, which was kind of funny. 
Um, Sam Mayer was starting on the front row next to Shane Van Gisbergen, and Sam Mayer pulled a Ross Chastain and drove into the access road on the first lap uh, because he missed the turn <laughs> um, and ended up also getting dumped in the process. So that was pretty funny. Um, there was a lot of spins. Um, you know, obviously on the road courses, they don't, they don't always, um, let me think. they don't always, um, throw cautions for spins. They just don't. It's never been that case. Um, and that was the case here. A lot of drivers did spin though. The restarts were complete chaos. Um, Portland's a very tight track. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, on restarts, especially there's a lot of passing opportunities. And that was no different here. Um, a lot of, a lot of, uh, jacking for position all over the place. Um, it was a tough day for Jesse Love. He got caught up in a late race incident. I think he did finish the race, but um, had a shot to win, and it was taken away. Uh, Haley Deegan lost a wheel entirely, and I don't, I didn't see any penalties asso- associated with that. But there should be, there should be one if they want to follow. The we don't talk about that. Uh, at all. That set up a late restart, and there was a big one because of it. So, there you go. Um, so, that was pretty awesome. Um, uh, Justin Allgaier really dominated the race, though, pretty much throughout until the end. Um, he kind of got screwed over with these late restarts and ended up getting spun, um, I think. Maybe not. I don't remember. I had to watch the highlights, so I don't really remember. But um, Shane Van Gisbergen, though, on the other hand, surprise, surprise, Pulled away and was able to win his first Xfinity first, race. First career win, because I don't count the Chicago Street course. Yay! I count it. First I career, don't, because first career technically ex- he was in a different car, and also he wasn't a starter. So technically, this is his first full series win. <laughs> Anyways, he wins, and he's locked into the uh, Xfinity playoffs now, so that should be interesting. Are you going to add him to the, uh, the, uh, no, he didn't New Year's Spectacular? He didn't win in Cup yet. Only for Cup. But he so, won in Cup last year. He did, and he made it last year. But doesn't mean he gets oh. in this year, unless he won the race, which he didn't win the race. So. Um... <laughs> Anyways, then we got the Cup Series race back at Gateway again. Um, it was a hot day, really, really hot. Um, and something confused me um, during the race. About midway through, they were doing green flag pit stops. And Mike Joyce said that this was the first time in the Cup Series history at Gateway, which was their, this was their third race there, that they had ever done green flag pit stops. Yeah. What? That's the truth. The last couple times, it's always been yellow flag pit stops. That's insane. That's it a, took that's, them three years. Just, just, just think of that. Three years since, you know, their first green flag pit stop. That's crazy. That's legitimately crazy. I, I did not believe him when he said that. I, it's like, how? How has this possible? Anyway, it's gateway. Uh, Josh Berry's day ended early with, I believe, brake failure. It looked like brake failure. Um, so there were streaks of uh, top tens and top fives, like they said at the beginning of the race. I watched race day, and uh, this is under the race they talked to him. Said, top five is what Clint Boyer said, and uh, well, that didn't. Uh, they talked. They talked about it after his wreck as well, which I thought was funny. They were going over other drivers that had long streaks going, but they included Josh Berry, and which was just really awkward because it was literally right after his wreck. So that was <laughs> pretty crazy. Anyway, um, later in the race, Kyle Bush and Kyle Bush and Kyle Larson tangled. Um, the Kyle, took, Kyle show took took Kyle Bush out, but Larson was able to continue. Um, I've never seen Kyle Kyle show ever. <laughs> Christopher Bell um, 
was having a really good race, dominating the race, but he had um, some motor problems. He ended up falling back to, I think, 7th or 8th um, by race end, but he did win. It, he didn't win, but he did finish the race thanks to Martin Truex pushing him. Uh, so that was that was kind of funny. Um, and then there was some more late race drama with Ryan Blaney having the lead as they came to take the white flag, and he ran out of gas. They were not talking about fuel mileage you know, at all, and he runs out of gas, handing the win to who else but Austin Sidrick. I feel bad for Ryan Blaney. I really do. He he had the car to win that race. He had the car to win that race. He battled so hard, and I knew from when Daniel Suarez, let me remind you, a lapped car, Daniel Suarez got back by him, I knew something was wrong. And then Cindric started getting closer and closer until they got back on the third and fourth turn, and uh, all of a sudden I hear Clint Boyer say, he, he's out of fuel! Like, thanks, Clint, we... We know that. We see it. <laughs> I just was... I just was... Um, I just, they weren't talking about fuel mileage at all. And then they talked about it at the end. They were like, yeah, he, he pitted well within the fuel window. And I'm like, okay. So how did he run out of gas? Because the crew didn't put enough fuel in the car. It was the crew's fault. Lady himself was um, very confused as well. And so he ended up finishing like outside the top 20, which I don't think he has a win yet this season. So nope. that could be a killer. Just saying. Especially but, the defending champion. Yeah, champion's hangover. Nah, his hangover. Whatever. But let's talk about the more crazy fact that goddamn Austin Cindric won a non-restrictor plate race on fuel mileage. If you guys don't remember, his last win and his only win was the 2022 Daytona 500. Excuse me? Austin Cindric. It's been what two a... years. Dude's two, ass. Two years. Ass. Oh. Um, Oh, when is this? When is Austin Sindrick gonna actually do good in the two car? Now he wins. <laughs> Yay! It's just really dumb, really, really weird. But hey, Sindrick wins. He's in the playoffs, and he got on. He's in the New Year's Eve spectacular again. He's the fifteenth driver to lock himself in. So, oh my god, Austin Cindric is back in the New Year's Eve Spectacular since 2022. Because he sucks and he doesn't know how to race a race. Yeah. That is, yeah, it is. And he got lucky and he most likely ain't going to win the New Year's Eve Spectacular. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Because we I some, would say that some pretty unlikely winners have won the race, aka AJ Allmendinger in 2021. Okay, <laughs> yeah, but that's just luck. But anyways, that set up a pretty crazy. That set up the end to a pretty crazy weekend overall at uh, both Gateway and Portland. It was a pretty good racing overall. I thought um, nothing too crazy though. So uh, about what you would about what you would expect. But it was just, so I don't know him hey, master if you've had any lasting thoughts about the weekend or no. crazy. Crazy. That's all I gotta say. And we do have one penalty. Do have one penalty. It's not a Haley Deegan penalty. So I guess they're just not gonna penalize her. Like it's gonna matter anyways. She finishes thirty fifth every week. So docking points from her is not a big punishment. Chop, chop. <laughs> don't talk about her that way. <laughs> This one is on Kyle Weatherman. Um, he was fined twenty five thousand dollars, 
for contact with another vehicle on pit road um, in the post race of the Portland race. So apparently he was mad at somebody and hit their car on pit road. And that was it. Got fined 25 grand for it, which, you know, it's an Xfinity driver. So it's maybe not pocket change, but they can afford it. Anyways, that's all we had from uh from uh There was one more thing, sorry. Oh. I meant to say this during the uh cup gateway. Just remember Carson Hosefar, and I said this before we started this. Carson Hosefar and Josh Wise. What? Josh Wise is a BJ McLeod, McLeod, Mc, I don't even know how to say the last name, racing. And you're meaning to tell me that he won or he, he got top 10? Sure. Are you, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> He did. Is it me? Josh, Josh Wise doesn't race in the Cup Series anymore. No, I'm not talking about Josh. Justin Haley, sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> Justin Haley, I'm sorry. I oh, no. botched. I botched his name. You botched it. You botched both. And I names. also botched the company name. It's Rick Rare. Rick Ware Racing, not BJ McLeod Racing. God damn it. Uh, people can roast me in the comments. I don't care. Also, <sighs> Hendrick Motorsports sucked at Gateway. They've always sucked at Gateway. The only person that finished in the top 10 was Kyle Larson. Yeah, they don't usually do well there. But, you know... Anyways, that's all we had for Gateway. Let's put it in the back. Like I said, I only have a couple other things to talk about before we get to Sonoma. The first is um, the whole thing with the Kyle Larson playoff waiver is over. It got granted. He can still race in the playoffs despite missing the Coca-Cola 600. So he is back in the playoffs because he has won this season. So there we go. Um, I don't think it should come to as a shock to anybody that he got a waiver, being that he drives for Hendrick Motorsports and he's a very, very popular driver, despite, you know, incidents. Um, he's done more things in NASCAR for NASCAR than it that he said on iRacing, but we don't talk about that. So he's still eligible. He can race. Full thing is done. Hold the baklas over. Stop talking about it, people. Okay? Okay. So the only other thing that I had to talk about, this is a pretty wild thing. Um, I'm sure all of you know about the, I don't want to get too political, but this is about the January 6th riots. I think we all know that those happened, right? And we know that NASCAR people, especially of the older generation, tend to be in the Trump demographic. Well, how about some drivers? Um, Tig He Scott, oh, no. Tig He Scott, and his son Jason were both arrested today. Well, not today, but at the time of recording this today, is, uh, they were is both he the owner of H Scott Racing. He might be. Well, they were both arrested for being in the January sixth riot. That's Tiggy, news to me. Take he Scott is a former NASCAR racer from way back when. Um, he used to run modifieds, and then he ran um, he ran NASCAR from 1976 to uh, well, he ran from 1976, and then in the from the 1976 to 1982. His last race was the 1982 uh, Daytona 500. 
His son Jason, I don't think, was a NASCAR driver. But... But I don't know. I, I didn't even know these people existed, to be honest with you. Um... He never won a race, so he wasn't that good. Hmm. He does not. He does not own H Scott Motorsports. Yeah, I just I, looked that up. That's what I was looking up. So interesting, interesting that that happened. But uh, are they really that surprised? No. 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 Me, I really don't get into politics because it's you know something that i don't like talking about yeah we'll leave it at that anyway yeah that's all i had though i there was fuck all nothing news wise this week so i don't know what hey master you got news you got the floor um so my as you know that me, I, my, long story short, me, Tyler, and Anne want to go to different racetracks um, this year. One of them, Kalamazoo Speedway. Just FYI, are we going to Kalamazoo Speedway? Hold on. Uh, it's not one of, <laughs> we, we did plan out some dates to go to some races. Not Kalamazoo Speedway, though. Um, because... My sister, she works for a uh, a uh, pet company. She works for the Human, uh, Humane Society down in Kalamazoo, and her work is on a race car. Um, so her work sponsors a street stock. Come to find out that street stock is third place in points at Kalamazoo Speedway. Um, so if you ever guys go out to Kalamazoo Speedway, um, look for the number, surprisingly, the number nine car. Because, uh, yeah, that's it's, uh, on my sister's company. So, someday I'll get to see them race, because... I haven't ever been to Kalamazoo Speedway. Now I have an actual reason to go. Right. Nah, we, we didn't we didn't plan to go there this summer. That might change. We're still in some plans are still in the works. Um, so we'll get that worked out though. So don't worry about that. But anyway, that's really all I had. Oh, Hitmaster had. We'll just jump into our predictions then, I guess. Or Sonoma. Sonomies. So I think the truck the trucks are off this week. Um, then I know who I'm going to pick for Xfinity. Yep, they're off. Xfinity and Cup are racing. So let's get down. I'm going to pick for the Xfinity series. I'm going to pick Borsa. Picking. He is. Do you even know Forrest. he's racing? He is racing. He's racing the number seventeen car. Oh, wild! Bar said, "Hopefully, he can get a win." Because uh, anyone kind of driving that seventeen car is usually a winner. So. Yeah, but it's also Boris said so. But he was in a trashy team. He drove for Richard Petty Motorsports that didn't have anything. This is true. And then he this drove for true. trash other ones. Now he's actually driving for Hendrick. This is true. I'm going to pick Shane Van Gisbergen to go back to back. Um, this is a very famous track for a lot of the IndyCar series used to come here. I don't know if they do. I think other series do come to Sonoma. So he might, he might be pretty familiar with this track. I'm not completely sure. But I just have a feeling that he can he can repeat these road courses so anyways cut predictions time 
Oh, also, we so, have to talk about Sonoma's got got a repave. Um, so it'll be interesting to see yeah, how the repave works. Yay, cool, repave. Now, Sonoma, if you could really do something for us, like, really do something for us. Race when it's grassy instead of this dust shit. Please, make, make, hell, make Sonoma instead of, you know, any track in the playoffs. Come on, Texas. How about you just put Sonoma in there? Grassy Sonoma. Because why not? I know it's going to be cold, but oh fucking well. <laughs> it's not going to be that cold. It is California. So. True. To be honest with you, this entire time I thought Sonoma was in New York. But now that you said that, yeah, it's in New York. But. I'm getting mine out. I already got yours done. Okay, well. Watkins Glen is in New York, not fucking Sonoma. We both might lose, uh, just FYI. Okay, okay, here we go. Predictions. Tyler has got another Stuart Haas racing driver. This time it's not the 14. Time to take off the one. Josh Berry, the man that wrecked last last week. I do not win. It's okay. It's okay. I won't win either. You you'll be better than me. What? How? Alex Bowman's best spot was at the Daytona 500, and he failed to his teammate. That's how garbage he is. Everyone on his team has a win. He does not. He is the Jimmy Johnson of Hendrick Motorsports. He does good a year. He probably wins a championship. And then fails multiple times. Again, I could be biased because I hate Jimmy Johnson. So you're telling me that he's going to win seven championships? I never said that. Well, you said he was the Jimmy Johnson of Hendrick Motorsports. I meant at the end of the year from Jimmy Johnson where he was going to retire. That Jimmy Johnson who almost wins at hmm, the Charlotte Roval. Brake check, like breaks too hard, runs into Martin Truex Jr. and lets the other person behind him just go by. Weird. So. Well, anyways... That's all we had for this week. A short episode, I know. But stay tuned for next week. We will recap Sonoma and, and everything else that might come up. Um, but, you know, if you want more of this stuff, all you got to do, if you want to be a guest, you want to get on, talk some NASCAR, uh, just join the Frank Wells Living Company Discord. Link is in the description down below. Request the Talk in NASCAR world. And uh, me or Hitmaster will work out a time to get you on. You have some fun. Should be a good time. Anyway, that's all we got. So stay tuned for much more amazing content from both me and Hitmaster. And until next time, see you guys later. Goodbye.